Hello, everyone, and welcome to this open day session at the Creative Computing Institute, or CCI. My name is Georgina, and I'm the Creative Learning Producer at CCI. And today we are here to talk about our diploma in Creative Computing course, both the UAL diploma and the graduate diploma. And we've got with us Vali Laliotti, who's the program director at CCI. We've got Joel Gettin Lewis, who's the main tutor at the diploma. And we also have the honor to have Valeria Toro, who's a diploma graduate or diplomat, uh, and Rocio Ray, who is a current student on the UAL diploma. So as you may already know, this open day session is complementary to the one that we run in December 2020. So if you haven't done it yet, I would strongly encourage you to watch the recording of the past information session, which is available on our YouTube channel under the open day playlist. So before we get started, we all have plenty of questions, right? That's part of our human nature, isn't it? So the aim of today's session is to make sure that all the questions and doubts that arise in the process of considering to apply or applying to the diploma or graduate diploma in creative computing are answered from a variety of perspectives. In order to do that, we've put together a list of the most frequently asked questions about this course. And as we go along, you'll see the different questions appearing in a banner at the bottom of the screen. So we will be able to cover all of them, hopefully this uh, next hour. However, this is an open and safe space for you to have a say as well and to ask anything you would like maybe to clarify or that maybe hasn't been covered and that is of your interest and you feel it's relevant, please, this is a space to do so. Uh, so we would encourage you to drop us a line on the chat and, and let us know whatever you feel that we should be talking about as well as we go along. Lastly, in terms of accessibility, we are live streaming on YouTube today, so we won't have live captions available during the session. But please know that this session is being captioned afterwards and it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel so you can rewatch uh, in case you missed any details. Just don't worry, please. Um, it's all going to be available to you and we will send you an email with a link after the event. So. Without further ado, I will now invite Vali, Joel, Valeria, and Rocio into this virtual space. So I'm going to add them all in the screen. Hey, Joel. Hey. Hi, Val. Hi. Hi, Vali. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hello. And hi, Rocio. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's, it's a pleasure to be sharing this space with you all. No worries. Thank you, G. <laughs> Beautiful. So shall we get this started? We've got, yeah, quite a few questions to go through. So we're going to start with the basic one about what is exactly the diploma in creative computing? Who would like to take on this one? Maybe Joel? I'll go for it. I'll go for it. <laughs> so uh, for me, the Diploma in Creative Computing is this amazing opportunity to for people who are already at UAL studying, studying a bachelor's to take an extra year between their second and third year, so before their final year, and come and learn creative computing from the whole team here at the Creative Computing Institute, which is currently based at Camberwell in South London. And the thing that's really exciting about it for me as one of the lecturers on the course is it enables me to work with, teach and learn from a whole bunch of people from a whole bunch of different backgrounds that are studying a whole bunch of different degrees. So we have people studying fashion, textiles, ceramics, product design, graphic design, all kinds, all the many, many different courses that you can take at a bachelor level at UAL, all coming here to CCI taking a year out of their bachelor's and then going back charged with creative computing knowledge to go and complete their final year in whichever BA they've chosen. Did I get it right? I mean, that's yeah? about right. Thank you, Joel. Okay, that was it. great. <laughs> Beautiful. OK, we've got the second one. Um, what's the difference between the UAL diploma and the graduate diploma in creative computing? Here, it would be super useful to know how many of you who are attending uh, to this session are actually here for the UAL diploma and for the graduate diploma. So if you could share that on the chat, it would be really useful to know exactly what level of information we could be sharing. But we're going to be covering a bit of the both because in the end, it's it's the same, right? So maybe, maybe Vali, you could share a little bit about this like slight difference. 
Yeah, of course. And, and I would say for that the diploma is exactly the degree I wanted to do. In, instead, I had to do a computer science degree, a design degree, and I did up an MBA. So you have the opportunity to actually learn all of that within a year. Uh, and, and that's amazing. And that's why I'm so excited about this program. Um, so the, the, so the program is run, uh, in two, um, sort of cohorts, if you like but you actually attend together. So the UAL diploma uh, in creative computing is that opportunity uh, for students across UAL to come together and learn creative computing for a year. Uh, and then go back into your, um, into your courses and uh, being able to have the tools of creative computing and do amazing stuff with your, with your art and, and uh, with, your, uh, with your work. Um, and then the graduate diploma is for uh, is predominantly online. It is for stu for people that have already graduated. So that's the main difference between the two. Uh, one is for uh, students that are currently enrolled, and the other one is for people that have already uh, graduated. And again, is the same opportunity to. Uh, take a year on creative computing and being able to then merge that together with uh, their um, their creative practice um, uh, or you know change uh, direction maybe in their careers. Is that about right? Beautiful. Thanks so much, Vali. That was super useful. Amazing. I think the next one as well will be for you, Vali. So what's the course structure to give people a little bit of a sense about all the units that um, they will go through during the diploma? That, uh, that's great. I'm a visual person, so maybe I'll show you a diagram. If, if you bear with me for a second, I will just share my screen. Okay. I feel like we would need some elevator music in the meantime. <laughs> I wish I had that ready. Okay. Okay. I think it's the embarrassing time where you see all my uh, my slides and uh, then <laughs> you find. No, no shame. No shame. No embarrassment. Yeah, no, with, with, with no, ourselves. That's the no most shame in the game. No shame in the game. <laughs> okay. Let me know when you're ready, Vali, and I will just add it onto the screen. Okay. Um, can you all see this? Yep. Okay, great. I don't expect you to be able to read every detail in there. I'll just gonna, I'm just gonna give you an overview. Um, the, the diploma course, so imagine this, it's a year. Um, and it's divided in two blocks. Some of you AL students will be very familiar with this idea of two blocks. Uh, and these are spread over three terms. So in a way, it took me a little while to get my head around blocks and terms, but practically it, said, it means that we have 13 weeks of, of teaching uh, on block one, uh, and that's the autumn term and part of the spring term. And then we have another, um, a similar structure for block two starts in the middle of spring term and it finishes in the summer term. So what is important, I think, uh, with that is if you look on the different color-coded um, uh, units, so uh, for example, we start with creative coding and creative computing frameworks on the first, uh, on the first term, on the first block. Um, this gives you the fundamentals, the core skills of coding, the core skills of, uh, of being able to work with creative computing. And that's Joel's amazing course, uh, amazing unit. Uh, he can go into more details mm -hmm. of that. But this unit is really building up a core skill. Um, the, second, the second unit down, which is introducing computational futures and artificial intelligence, uh, again, is, uh, is quite a course uh, skill set uh, based not only on coding skills, but also in allowing you to critique and, um, uh, and write essays. Uh, so that is is a, a place where um, you do uh, use some of the practice and the coding you've learned, and you've been able to really learn about artificial intelligence and been able to critique on that and uh, in a in a final essay work. 
And then finally, on the same uh, block one, uh, we have the creative practice, uh, a lot of fun. This is physical computing. So uh, you're getting uh, to work with uh, Arduino kits, you with different, um, different sensors and all kinds of um, interesting electronics. Um, and uh, that in a way is a creative practice. Uh, and we also show you, you know, what kind of creative um, computing out there is using this kind of, um, of uh, physical computing. And the idea here is that every block gives you um, core coding skills. It gives you ability to critique and think around um, creative uh, computing and how this is used in, in society and how you can make a change through that. And also uh, there is a practice unit where you are able to, to actually put the practice uh, and use physical computing, um, both physical practice, but also consider how to use it in, in, your, own, um, uh, in your own art, artistic uh, endeavors. The same structure we follow on block two. Uh, so again, there will be coding, which is on collaborative app development. Uh, that's again, Joel um, uh, teaching this uh, and it's very hands-on. It's, it's a completely fun uh, way of learning how to do collaborative apps. Um, the middle um, uh, unit again is now introducing you a lot more uh, on what is happening out there as you are reaching the the second part of the of the course how can you use that how do others um, out in the industry are using uh, digital and creative computing and this unit has a lot of um, uh, you know guest speakers so you will be exposed to people that are doing it outside uh, in the industry, in the real world, and maybe making some connections uh, for the future. And the final uh, unit is the one that in a way brings everything together. You are able to do a final project on this and uh, uh, create a piece for your portfolios and think that you can really show in the big UAL um, show online. I know it's a lot to absorb, but if you think there's two blocks and in every block you're learning practical skills, computing skills, then you're learning how these are used and, and you critique about that and able to look what the industry is doing. And finally, it's a very hands-on creative practice where you are supported to use your own tools and the new tools you're learning to produce uh, creative computing pieces for your portfolios and also for the UAL show. Beautiful. Thanks, Vali. That was super informative. Great. Okay, so shall we move on to the next one? We've got the next one says, will I get to study with people from across disciplines? So I think it's clear that the answer is like a big yes. But um, I was just thinking now that maybe Val and Rocio, you could share a little bit about your experience, what course you come from. And for you, Val, coming back to your course, how it was a little bit and how you're applying all this new skill set into your practice. So it would be great to hear from, from you both. Who wants to start? Um, I'm happy going. Maybe my, um, my experience might be a bit less because I haven't finished the course. So I'm Rocio and I'm currently doing the diploma. I'm usually studying graphics at CSM. So I'm doing the, um, now it's between my second and third year, like Joel mentioned before. And yeah, so, so far it's, in terms of this question, I'd say you definitely get to know loads of people. Um, I've gotten out friends from, even, even with COVID, I've managed to meet people from our direction at LCC, uh, from fine art, from product, from loads of courses. It's definitely like very enriching in that sense. Um, yeah, I don't know if Bali want to go. Um, yeah, no, I would agree as well. Like, you get to meet everyone from across all UAL campuses, which is really cool. And yeah, the fact that you get to meet sort of like these diverse set of people means that you get diverse set of mindsets as well. And the way they work and their applications towards their own practices is really cool. Um, 
yeah, it was a great experience. And then sort of my degree, I'm doing a degree in 3D design at Camberwell. Um, so just coming back in third year, knowing how to do um, physical computing, but also um, digital and creative coding is definitely sort of helped elevate my own practice and sort of how I produce my work um, now and forwards. Yeah, it's been really a really cool experience. Mm. I Sorry, I'd love to know as someone who hasn't finished the course, how you found uh, going back to your main course? Um, like I was really upset because our course sort of ended due to COVID last March. So we all had to like wrap up really quickly and we didn't get to say bye to each other. I didn't get to say anything. goodbye. Oh, yeah. I wanted to do the whole, oh, I'm sorry, cutting in, but that was the saddest yeah. thing. We're still going to do it. Don't worry. We'll still do it. Yeah, we wanted, we had like big plans of our graduate no. showcase and then, yeah, COVID happened and it was just very um, weird sort of navigating that space mm. and online learning. But going back to sort of my degree and my course and even my dissertation, um, it was just amazing because I had all this newfound information in terms of like theory and practice that I could now apply to my own um, dissertation. And yeah, just like all these new ideas that I had never considered before had it not been applied, mm. had I not gone to CCI. Um, it's great. You just sort of expand as a creator, and as an artist. Beautiful, thanks. There we go. Well. <laughs> That's a great answer. And actually leads us to the next question, which is how can my individual practice expand with creative computing? Like on a personal level for you both, like how has that evolved or how is that evolving? Because I guess that's that really opens up a lot of like doors in front of you and your practice, right? Mm -hmm. um, I jump in if you want. Um, first of all, I think it gives you like a massive understanding of your reality because now I can't like just walk up down in the street with my headphones and think oh this is how the bluetooth is connecting um mm. so it gives you a massive understanding of like how the world around you uh works because we are surrounded by computers so that's that's a, a big uh take even if you don't progress and you don't want to like do computing after in your when you go back to your course um and when you finish the diploma um but I definitely wanted to do more interactive work and I didn't have the skills at all um, I didn't have the way of learning what to do anything. So I think the year made so far this just just a few months. So this past few months have given me a massive understanding of different techniques, uh, different skills, and now I can create loads of interactive work I couldn't do before. So I'm uh, really into physical experiences like with electronics, and yeah, I guess you can learn interaction in my case, um, both digitally, like in the web, and also physically through electronics and the course teaches you both so that is yeah interaction is a big one for me and i've been able to do the do that with this course um yeah i definitely agree with that um i also had the opportunity to learn um interactive design and computer vision and all these new techniques and sort of methods of creating that i've never considered before and yeah, that sort of because previously I had enjoyed like making my own films um, for my research projects or whatever. And now sort of developing my own skills with creative coding, I can sort of take that and produce like more experimental stuff in terms of computer vision. And yeah, it just sort of allows you to grow as a creator and enter this space that you would have never sort of realized you could go into had you not sort of joined yeah thanks both that's great and you've already altered upon the actual skills that you you will learn after completing the diploma but maybe it would be good to just have as well your insights on that joel or valley like from from like our perspective what are we equipping the students with during the course Joel, you, would you like to go first, or sure? I think the, <clears throat> I think the first thing is is just that what, what Val was talking about just now, talking about like, oh, sorry, Rosie, looking at the looking at the world in a different way, right? That you're going, we're going to give you the way to th this kind of computational lens as a way of looking at the world, and so it means that even if you don't necessarily go into writing code. 
I think everyone could agree that computation and has been one of the big revolutions to go through society in the world in the last century or so. And I think it's only going to happen more in the next century. And I think interestingly as well, I think computing and computer science is actually going to, well, disappear in a way, right? Because it's going to actually be subsumed into all other categories of research and human inquiry, because computing is just going to become like another standard part of infrastructure, like electricity or water or anything else like that. It's just going to be taken as de rigueur, as it were. Being specific to the diploma, after spending a year with us, you'll have a really excellent grounding in two um, very powerful languages, JavaScript and Swift. Um, for, so you'll be able to code for the web, and you'll be able to code for the biggest company in the world uh, software platform of iOS and Mac OS. But I think importantly, as Vali talked about earlier, you'll be able to criticize and and think critically about these technologies. And so as I was talking about earlier, even if you don't end up writing code every day, you'll be able to lead teams of coders. You'll be able to think about the challenges from a kind of project position. You'll be able to think about the opportunities, but also the dangers in terms of blindly following a technology route. And I think that's one of the things that we've learned over the last 20 years or so, or 30 years, maybe even longer, is if we leave it to the engineers, we end up with the kind of challenges that we have right now, looking at some of the world's social networks and things like that. So I think it's really important that computing goes outside of the area that it's been in for the previous few decades of a kind of tech priesthood. Uh, and I mean that in a, in, a, in a gender way as well, and actually moving that out to a much wider perspective. And I think that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons that I'm teaching here at the Diploma and being part of UAL is because there's such a breadth of people with so, such a breadth of practices from so many different backgrounds and ways of thinking. And being able to add computing into those things is, is, is super exciting. Did I answer the question? I think I kind of did. Thank you. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> did. And you covered the, the following one, which was about the, the coding languages that students learn. So that's great. Amazing. Oh, so before we... Oh, yeah, of I course. Rosie. As well? Sorry. Um, I think we didn't mention that you might learn... Maybe, yeah, a value. I think you mentioned uh, about AI, but I think it's worth no noticing, that, like stating that you learn also how AI works and the general... Um, you get a general understanding. And I think especially now where we are living in a, you know, a fake news world as well, where you've got um, people maybe like making things up a little bit. It's really interesting to understand these kind of technologies. And yeah, just want to know, say that you will also learn how to, how AI works overall. Beautiful, thanks for noting that, Rocio, that's great. Oh yeah, and physical computing. So a load of Arduino as well, and all of that kind of, so you, th three languages, four languages, many languages. I think one of the things that we're gonna teach you is we're gonna give you a general perspective on computation, and then you'll be able to pick up a language, any language in the future, right? So we're teaching yeah. you the principles of it so that you are empowered to then go and find out what you need to find out for whichever project you're working on. Yeah, and I think it is important. I'm, I try I, because I've done the journey the other way, if you like. I started from computer science, and I realized I need art and I need design, uh, and the society needs those things together. And that's why I'm so happy that I am, you know, in CCI and in the diploma. Um, we need those two things together. And if you think of the skill set you get as an artist, you learn your paints, you learn your brushes, you learn your canvases, um, then consider that on the technology side in the same way. Uh, we give you the skills so that you have mastered you know the coding you have mastered the bits and uh, and atoms in there um, but also the physical computing the components that you can build um, you know real stuff and artificial intelligence so you get to learn your tools and then the critique on those and how they apply in the society so hopefully you will be able to use this to change our world for the better Amazing, thanks Vali. 
Great. So before we move on, we have a few questions on the chat, which is worth as well bringing up here. So we have Jack asking about what is the difference between some students maybe working on site and online? So maybe we can talk a little bit about the, the learning model that we are um, yeah, following at CCI. Maybe Vali, this could be covered by yourself. Yeah, I think, first of all, I think maybe I confused someone because this is not about diploma and graduate students. Um, so the, the cohorts, both of the graduate diploma and the diploma, you, you're coming together. Uh, and at the moment, and because of the pandemic, of course, things have happened online. And very recently, we were finally able to actually be together again in, in a very safe way. Uh, so that's what we call blended education, is that we have some sessions that are uh, in person, so we get to see our students again and each other, which is superb, I can tell you. Um, we all have big smiles um, in, in our faces. Um, and that, but to do that in a safe way, we split you into groups and, and we have you joining uh, in, uh, in rooms with enough distance uh, and that's how that in-person training is uh, uh, teaching is happening at the moment of course by September if everything goes well uh, we should all be enjoying a bit more of in-person sessions and of course we rotate students and groups uh, and a lot of the the teaching especially during the lockdowns was happening online uh, so that's what is happening for the students that actually join us from across uh, UAL. And um, some, some of our graduate students decide, are also having the option to be fully online. So for those students, they will um, attend online and we are fully equipped even post pandemic to provide this uh, for them. So for the graduate diploma, there is this option um, and uh, we have people joining from all over the world, um, which is another way of, of mingling with all kinds of um, disciplines, but also cultures, which is also very, very important. Um, did I answer? I think I answered that question because I confused people, I think, when I talked about the two degrees. I think Thank it's you. clear now, Vali. Thank you. There's also another question uh, talking about the units. So, Maybe we could clarify if all students will go through all the units or how does that work, Pali? Yes, uh, so there are three units in every block and you take all units. Uh, so all together, there will be six units um, and uh, three in each block. Beautiful, thanks, Pali. Great, okay, so we have the following question, which is, about the project work. So what sort of work will I get to produce during the diploma? So here we could either start talking about maybe the briefs or maybe we could ask Val and Rocio to share some of the work or just yeah, talk us through some of the work that they're doing. What do you prefer? Who's up for sharing? <laughs> maybe I could talk about the way that that we assess perhaps or like what how the units work mm -hmm. so there's a there's a variety of there's there's the for the three different units for every block there's three different units and my two units are more on the kind of foundations of computer science and computational thinking as Vali said earlier on so my units are examined by multiple choice and a a, a short programming exam and that's the same for both units and then we're lucky enough to have Alex Fafega as the person taking on the machine learning and also the creative um, community uh, units. And they're both assessed by essays. And then we've got the fantastic Indra, uh, who's done, who's doing the third units in both of the blocks. So they're the ones where you're learning about computational uh, environments and visuals. And those are both uh, assessed by kind of a project, a project presentation. So we've got kind of three different main methods of assessment for those. 
Yeah, and maybe right. I can add to that, that that also it's important because it caters for different learning styles and different, you know, strengths um, in, in terms of, uh, of all our students. So it's quite a balanced way of assessing, uh, providing opportunities for essays, practical work and, and also um, a theoretical um, uh, and, uh, work. Amazing. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, would you be up for sharing some, like some of your work or just talking a little bit about maybe Val, you could just, yeah, share with us what projects maybe you developed during the course or something that maybe you've now brought to your own practice in your course. Um, I can share my screen. Yay. It looks so bad, <laughs> so messy. Um, yeah, so these are some of the works I produced. Um, yeah, so again, I had an entire experience to coding, creative coding. Um, so this was sort of like a, a really um, experimental process for me, I suppose. Um, so this was the major project I ended up doing um well it was more of a, like a speculative approach towards the future of makeup in terms of like theater design and um productions where i sort of just mapped audio uh, microphone sounds so sounds from the environment in this case it was reacted towards music and it would map towards color change and line changes um yeah definitely a fun experience and sort of changed my own mindset in terms of like what the future could look like and how we can use these tools um, to build towards them. And again, these are just more experiments um, with audio and how it kind of reacts and changes towards the environment and kind of in my third year as well, I'm still sort of exploring um, that very briefly, but again, this is a skill that I will further take in towards my um, own practice and how can I expand this and sort of experiment it with different types of um, works that are out there. And this one's not loading, but yeah, it, you know, I was able to create these stunning visuals and they all react based on the environment and sound, which is really cool. Beautiful, Val. Sorry for jumping in, but it's really okay. beautiful. Oh, thank you. There was an amazing breakthrough when Val started just hacking into the code and really getting into it, and she was getting yeah. these amazing color results. And I was just like, "This is a this is so amazing!" <laughs> but it's also, I think, another big thing about the diploma, and I've seen that in the previous year, and I'm seeing that in the year that Rocio's in now, and saw it in Val's year, which was the first year to all become diplomats, was this kind of threshold point that everyone goes through where they go from thinking that code and computers are something that's either not for them or that the most they could interact with them is using a software tool like Photoshop or, or, or Final Cut or something else like that. And then the breakthrough of like, oh, I can author my own thing, right? Even if you're not gonna be doing that for the rest of your life, just that kind of power and that autonomy uh that you get from that to say that instead of just being a consumer of this stuff it becomes a two-way process and you can be critical about it and and that's that's the winner for me when i can see people doing that um i can share as well if you want me to um that would be great um okay let me know if it doesn't show okay yeah it's appearing can you now see that? Yep. Can you see my screen? Yes, there it is. Cool. Okay. So yeah, this is um, my website. And this is the last project we did. Well, um, obviously, all of the projects are very like individual. Uh, but this was the electronics, the physical computing projects where we had and um, basically I created kind of like this project that would um, read and store the ambient uh, light and sound. And then with pressing a button, you'll be able to like uh, display it again. Um, and it was all about like memories and how we um, store memories and we make memories with our surroundings. 
So that's um, a bit of me in the process. Um, I learned how to solder as well. Um, that's Arduino and so I'm doing some code. So I'm just, just keeping through um, and that's kind of like the end of it. Um, so yeah, just going through quickly through those. Um, that's more process. And as well, I think uh, there was a question about how to include some bits uh, you do about computing in your uh, portfolio. And I think this might be helpful for you. So I've got like an experimenting kind of like bit. And these are all things I've done in CCI. So you have some Arduino bits, uh, little exercises we had. Um, then this is uh, the machine learning or AI kind of like. Um, I haven't seen know. these demos. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah, and kind of created this. These are all really small code snippets, but um, this is PostNet, so it tracks like your body. And I create like a inter kind of interactive uh, portfolio showcase where <laughs> it will literally like follow all others on my project. So yeah, that's, that's a small thing. This is how and good then, creative computing is. You get to a point where you dismiss doing an entire body interface for showing your portfolio. It's like, oh, just a little code <laughs> snippet. It's just, just a usual. little thing. And this is um, Joel's um, kind of like unit. I did like put like a little list. Also, you let what you get have is, which is what this is, this being displayed on. And then you create things like this. These are all small exercises, but they were great. You can create really cute interactions like that. Um, yeah, the other ones might take a little bit to load, but this is picking the color of the pixel. Yeah, and that's that are some things. Uh, Oh, I think we lost. We I lost think she's I think yeah. she's gonna be back in a second. She's lost in the creative <laughs> coding. <laughs> These space. interfaces, amazing, they're dangerous. They're dangerous. That's amazing amazing projects, and I think that <laughs> power. Actually, she's oh, back. So <laughs> <that was such laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> that is very bad UX design. I'm. Yeah, I want my refund. <laughs> Um, but I think that that power of actually, I, I'd love the fact that you, you you have it on your website and it is precisely that kind of preparing also for the rest of the world out there so that um, those projects and the things that you do, even the small exercises that you showed are really part of a portfolio and, mm -hmm. and it really uh, enriches, I think, um, that that sort of projected image outwards. Really? I think, yeah. We've got we've got a question actually about as as Rosie already picked up. Um, Emily's asking. I'm just going to show it on the screen now. I have lots of curiosity for creative computing and creating an interactive an interactive level in my product design course, but I'm trying to work out how to show it through my portfolio. Do you have any tips? I think that's an amazing an amazing question that maybe yeah we could cover here between all of us. So I'm, I'm just wondering whether this is a question, Emily, you'd like to come to us and you're wondering how to show it in your portfolios on your application. You shouldn't worry about that. Um, you should make your application and, um, and it's, it's uh, not necessary that you have to show that you really uh, have done creative computing. The whole point of this course is that we take people that have never touched it before and amazing Joel, Indira and Alex, they're just completely demystifying it, making it um, easy, uh, making it approachable uh, and in a very quick time. It's like magic. Uh, it is literally like magic and it works. Um, I think if that was the question, I would say, don't worry about the portfolio. If your question was about, well, I want to do something now and you have some skills and you, you like to consultants uh, drop for a conversation i mean we're very very happy to to also sort of have one-to-ones if you're interested for that but i think definitely to be able to use interaction uh, in your product design and in the way that you present your products or maybe your products themselves become more interactive this is the course to take for sure definitely thanks Vali. Beautiful. Okay, moving on, we have another question about graduation showcase. So maybe here, Joel, shall we share screen and just show people around the the graduation sort of um, online platform that students created last year, which was super fun and amazing to to see. Yeah, 
Sure. Do you do you want to do it, or shall I do it? What, what? How should we do it? I can do if it. If you could do it, that would be great. Just because I'm here in the controlling the <laughs> this stream. Let me see. I think Val. In the meantime, um, Emily just posted on the chat that that was great to hear. Thank you so much. So hopefully we've we've answered that question. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Emily. OK, got your stream over here. I'm just going to add it there. Beautiful. OK, oh. so this is this working? It is working, yeah. Yep. OK, so this was the showcase that we made last year. This was all made with the help and support of the amazing Like Like Arcade at Carnegie Mellon uh, at the Studio of Creative Inquiry, which is run by an old friend of mine, Golan Levin, and made by an amazing coder, Paolo Petticcherini. And so I got in contact with him, and he agreed that he'd open source the project. And then all the students of last year's diploma got together and customized this amazing online platform to make it, as you can see here, a stunning pixelated rendering of Camberwell itself. So here we have got reception mm, so and we can go into the food room and we've got a whole series of projects here uh, that are all running uh, live. Uh, we have some food to uh, snack on as well. There's a huge different site here. They made the completely custom map um, and this is all completely live as well. Um, you can click around. It's still all there. I'll, I can send the link in the chat in a second. And if there were other people here as well, we could chat with them. Um, what do we have here? Let's look at this speech bubbles project. Um, so I can click this project. And this is running on Glitch, which was a hosting program platform that we used for a lot of students' projects um, last year. I'm sure we'll use it again um, this year. This was a project by Jesse Zhang, who I think is back at Central St. Martins now. And let's see if this one's going to work. The problem is, is the dreaded bit rot may have, I think I maybe should have been running this in Chrome. I picked exactly the wrong project. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, here we go. We can just look at the project video. So here's Jesse talking about her project. I think it's muted, so you can't actually hear what Jesse is saying, but she's made this amazing project presentation. So uh, yeah, this was the this was the this was the place that we chose to make the graduate showcase because of course we were locked down at the time. But this is exactly the kind of ingenuity and creativity that we really want to foster at CCI, which is taking a, a, a potentially disastrous situation like a global pandemic and then mm. um, using that as an opportunity to actually make a brand new digital interface that in a lot of ways had qualities that we wouldn't even even been able to get um, actually attending in person. So the classic one, uh, there's a couple of things that I always say, which is number one, it's not a bug, it's a feature. And number two is just keep swimming, <laughs> which is my favorite character of all time, Dory from uh, the incredible Finding Nemo. And uh, I'm sure Val and Rocio are already very tired of me saying just keep swimming. But I think mm -hmm. that's another thing that we aim to teach people, which isn't, it's not even about the knowledge, right? It's actually much more about the, the practice and the attitude and the ability, the resilience to be able to say, I'm just going to keep going. Because one of the things that's extraordinary about software and writing code particularly is you're always at the edge of your own incompetence, right? And, and this is something that you just have to get used to and be able to push through. And I think that could be a wider way of thinking about life and especially art and design practice as well. So that's one of the other things that I'm really excited about is the is the way that I can, with benefit of my experience and Valley's experience and Indra's experience and, and Alex's experience, all of these things coming together to give the next generation of people the, the, the skills we need to fix a lot of the big problems that we can see in the world, right? And I think it goes outside of almost digital thinking as well. Uh, it goes into a kind of way of looking at the world. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about being at CCI. You can see the flags that were flying outside Camberwell there. We know that Black Lives Matter and the, the rainbow flag really does sum up our idea around total inclusion. And, and actually through all of that is a greater strength and resilience for us as a whole. So that's 
another one of the things that's brilliant about coming to CCI is you can be part of that family, that chosen family. <laughs> Thank Joel. It's great to hear you. That's great. Yeah. And something that um, a question that we always get as well is about the more employability side of things. So what sort of jobs do you believe that a student would be able to get after graduating with creative computing? It would be great to hear from you, Joel, and Vali as well, and also from you, Val, and Rocio, about how do you see your own career expanding now? Like, what sort of jobs maybe you were thinking that you would never be able to apply for, but then now, all of a sudden, you can, you know? So it would be great to hear from your perspectives on the employability. Yeah. So maybe I can just very quickly say something that Joel has said already. I think it is about... Uh, there, there, are, there is, of course, the path of actually becoming, you love coding so much, you love creative coding, and, and you're employed in, in that amazingly growing industry of computer science, AI, technology, the tech sector or you actually uh, building your own creative agency using this kind of, of tools uh, and and uh, and we see that uh, technology is only expanding uh, it's going to be more opportunity for jobs and and for actual products that you might want to bring to life but i think also there is the element of leading teams that have developers and creative people together uh, because you understand both languages. And I think that's the important thing. It's like, it doesn't matter which particular programming language you've learned, is you've learned the language of computing and the creative, of course, that you already have, you built up, so you can bridge and lead these kind of teams, which means that you're getting, you know, a lot closer to higher higher levels of management and and, and so on, and hopefully higher salaries, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, I just, I'll just duck in and say, you know, I think learning how to code is a pretty useful skill to have on the CV, um, just as a base, as a base level, and being able to demonstrate, um, especially creative ways of engaging with that. Um, I think it's probably more useful for me to give up the floor to Val and Rocio on this, but just to say one last thing is, this is obviously a pretty challenging time in the employment market, right, and. I think anything you can do to differentiate yourself from the pack in terms of being able to say whichever course you've taken with creative computing is going to add an aspect that not many people have. And I think to repeat what, what Vali was talking about, the combination of, as it were, engineering, which is not a label I believe in, but engineering based skills along with skills around design uh, and art and being able to kind of be able to be creatively uh, questioning things, particularly with the training that we're going to give you around inclusion and being able to be critical of some of these technologies is really the skills that people are looking for. And part of the reason the CCI was created was that, you know, Valley and I and other people that have had academic and commercial careers um, earlier in our lives that people were coming to us saying we need students with this blend of skills and there weren't places that were turning out students like that and you know people like google and people like apple and some of these other goliaths in the world were asking for these skills but the final thing i would say as well is is i'm a real believer in people setting up their own businesses as well as vali said so I'm really excited about, you know, a thousand flowers blooming and people being able to set up their own businesses and being able to make sustainable businesses that work with the kind of ethical and creative lives that people want to leave. But yeah, how's the job hunting going? <laughs> Bad, do you want to answer the job hunting one? And I'll go um, afterwards. Yeah, I don't mind. Um... So after graduating, I went into my dissertation year, like in the middle of a pandemic, that was um, very stressful. Um, but then I started sort of uploading my work in terms of what I did at CCI. And um, kind of Joel always made this point um, back in class where it was always like, if you want to get 
the job you want you have to sort of showcase you know those type of roles you want to get I suppose and so I started sort of like uploading my visuals because I, I do experimental films and I actually managed to land um, like a short role in making a music video for a music band which was really cool and I would have never expected to have gotten that role um, at any point especially like during the middle of a pandemic in the middle of my dissertation I didn't think I, I would get something like that but had I not put sort of like my experimental visuals on there they wouldn't have found it and they wouldn't have been you know this is perfect this is what we want we want to hire you so yeah that was that was a great experience and um job hunting yeah it's very difficult um right now with everything going on but I think had I not been able to had I not sort of developed my own skills and developed this creative computing skills and sort of diversify my portfolio a bit more I wouldn't be able to enter more spaces, I suppose, and look at more options in terms of job roles out there. Because, you know, I could go into a role of like material manager or researcher or a maker, but I can also go as a coder or a, or a digital content creator. You know, I've got a variety of options um, out there, you know. Congratulations on the music video. That sounds exciting. Thank <laughs> you. That's great. Um, just to add up a little bit to what everyone said, um, I definitely agree with what Val was saying. And I think now um, I'll be able to like have multiple skills. So I'll be able to offer maybe more my graphics or you know the branding and whatever I know what to do. And plus I'll be able to do the code inside. So that's um, really interesting, I guess, for different companies. And I definitely wouldn't be able to offer anything like that if I hadn't done the course so that's very very good and I think also you meet so many people in the industry while you do the course which is um, amazing because it's really important like the people you know as well and your contacts and this course will allow you to know key people in the industry that will be able to help you out um, when you're trying to get jobs and anything like that and yeah I think I had another point but I probably just um, forgot about it so if I remember I'll say <laughs> I was just going to add one more thing I was watching and I just to echo what Rosio was saying about meeting people who are actually in the industry that's one of the things that Alex Fafega has been so 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 amazing at right because he's set this extraordinary company Kamuzi, kamuzi.xyz go check it out he is sharing his time between teaching on the diploma and running this incredibly successful studio, this commercial studio. And as a result of that, he can bring in people from the industry. And I spent, I watch these presentations as well. I love them. Like I watched on Monday, I watched this incredible presentation from Kate Moros and Moros Studio. And they were just so honest and direct about their experiences, some hilarious things mistakes that they made at the beginning of their uh, career and some of the ways that they think about getting work now and going into real detail as well not just a portfolio show like ha literally saying how much they price things at and how they regretted underpricing when they were younger and some of the things that they spent their money on like i think they set up they set up a music label and that was like a complete disaster but then alex has also set up a music label so don't set up a music label apparently if you if you if you want to save money but the the wider point of that is is it's not just theoretical it's actually people who are making their livings and lives from engaging with creative code and creative ways of thinking right now so it's not just in the abstract it's real advice about how to get along in this challenging world that we find ourselves in and i think that's super empowering because computing and digital knowledge enabled me to change my life and have do the kind of things that I wanted to do. And that's what I want to give to the students at the diploma and and, and, and more widely as, as well. I got my point back if I can. Yeah, of um, course. Yeah, Go ahead. It's also about jobs and I think it's related to what Joel was saying about how new and how um, a niche it is at the minute is that um, you might not have like you might not be able to find the job or the job title you want to have already like out there so you can even create it um yeah definitely more jobs are going to be created in the future so if you don't see yourself fitting in any of them right now just create your own um and uh, yeah i think for example i'm really interested in emotional well-being and psychology and i want to mix that with tech and i don't think it's 
a, like a massive um, industry at the minute. So definitely it's something I like to explore and like maybe find my own job in that sense. Beautiful. Yeah. I love if if I can say I love the way that you talk so confidently about having and pursuing your own your own practice and your own company and I, I think that that's quite an important part and and uh, as as Joel said I think Alex's uh, course and the fact that we we all I mean Joel you didn't speak about your own company we all have practices and and I saw a, a question around performing and performance and um, that's that's sort of something that I do with my own practice. So there is a lot of encouragement, I think, and especially coming out of a pandemic where jobs might be a bit more difficult to find, you getting the skill set and the, the confidence to actually pursue your own creative practice as well and land with, with contracts, with music labels. Don't set up the music label, make the music video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in times of the gold rush, sell shovels. Like in times of a music rush, make performances. I don't know. I'll I'll work on that. I'll work on that. <laughs> Hi, beautiful. Thanks everyone. Um since we have just uh three minutes left, I think. Um I thought maybe we could cover the more practical bits about the application, which is again something important that we need to cover here. So I'm just going to quickly say a few bits about that. So a question that actually appeared on the chat as well um, about the coding skills needed to apply. Um, we get that question a lot. Do I need to know any coding to apply? I think we already covered that, but it's like a big no. No, like, correct no me coding. If I'm wrong. No. Just come, come with an open mind and we'll take care of the rest. Amazing. Another one is, do I need a portfolio to apply? Value already touched upon that one. You don't need. It's actually something that um, it's not mandatory on the application process. If there is something that you feel it's relevant because it shows a little bit about your interest and why you care about creative computing, you're more than welcome to submit it, but that will not make the decision uh, in the application process. You know, it's not going to wait. So don't worry if you don't have one at the minute it's all good. And then just to give you a bit of information about the application process. So the application process for the graduate diploma and the UL diploma is different at the moment. So if you want to um, apply for the graduate diploma, you have until the 15th of May to go through the UAL system. So that is um, through our website. I'm going to paste the links to the course, which I'm sure you've all already checked, but just in case, I'm going to put it on the chat so you can check uh, the process. So that is uh, done through the UAL um, official application um, platform. And then in terms of the UAL diploma, which is a sandwich year between second year and third year of your degree at UAL, the deadline to apply is the 11th of June. We've went through, we've gone through two rounds of applications. So the first one is already closed, but there's like plenty of space for more applications to, to be accepted um, and to join the CCI. So we're going to be closing the deadline on the 11th of June and we're going to contact everyone who applied during the these two months around uh, yeah, mid-June, uh, the following week after the applications close. And that is done through an internal process. So you're going to see if you check the, the UL Diploma in Creative Computing website, you're going to see a link there to apply as well. And that will take you to a form, an online form, where you just tell us a, a little bit about yourself, what course you come from, what is your motivation. It's a very straightforward process, nothing very complicated. We just want to know what motivates you to, to be part of CCI. And, and that's all, really. That's all. It's super, super simple. and. Hopefully, yeah, very accessible for everyone. And I think that is everything I wanted to cover on that front. Let me see if there's anything that we missed. I think there's a question uh, by Jack about if you'd be able to like keep the connections with your uh, cores and peers and how the lectures would work. Beautiful. Do you want to take that one, Valley? Uh, yeah, let me see. So is, is this about how to keep a connection with the cohort, the diploma? I, I'm not sure I understood it. Maybe if you can highlight. I think it. it's current course. Yeah. So I think it's ah, someone asking like, I'm already at UAL. What's it like going away for a year and then coming back? Do I keep a connection with the students who are my peers? Like how, mm. what happens? 
I see. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the diploma course is a is a full on full time course. So uh, you're getting immersed in your new. Um, uh, your, your new friends, so all the other diploma students. And that's important because you're learning a new language. So you're learning to think together and it's extremely valuable to actually interact with the new uh, students, the new cohort for a year. Then you can go back. And of course, you're going to be again back into, uh, into your uh, friends and, uh, and people that you know from your previous um, uh, cohort, but you will be different. You will be different. They will be different as well. Um, so it's uh, it's very important to to understand that it is a full time thing. Of course, you can keep your friendships and you can keep your connections, uh, but you you more likely gonna be working quite a lot full on uh, in getting the creative coding. One thing that also sometimes students ask is, do I have access to the, the workshops and so on that I had I have before? And I, the answer to that is you have access to the creative computing resources, but not of the of your um, for a year, you wouldn't necessarily need actually some of, of the resources you had in the past because you're learning new stuff. You're going to be using a lot of new tools. Um, so we're going to provide all the resources and the equipment that you need for that. There's also another question, a very important one for Jack, Jack Michael Carr saying that cyber would cybernetic augmentations help? Uh, yes, but they're not compulsory. No, I'm joking. You don't have to have any cybernetic augmentations. By the time you leave, however, you will have them as Val can, can testify to. Now she's now partially uh, robotic and has awesome, awesome power. I'm joking. I'm going crazy. It's you been told me day. I needed them to apply, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I think the thing that I take from all of these questions and answers is if you have any doubt about applying, apply, right? The, the 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 we are expanding the diploma is growing we're still not at capacity we doubled in size from val's year to go to rocio size we're going to grow again um we're growing as a department so come and be part of the cci family we'd love to have you with us yay and on that note um i would like to hear from you just like if you can share just in one word what is the cci community like because i think that's something that makes cci very unique like <laughs> This this community is just amazing. So it would be great to to hear from you about that. Who wants to start? Oh yeah, the dog. Yeah, you get one of those. Um, Don't yeah, give it I, away. No. I, I, sorry, you won't get one of those. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, definitely. Basically, we are just showing you what the community is like, and it's so open, very inclusive. Um, really on it, trying to be inclusive, and yeah, very open source, and that's. Uh, you can take that as, yeah, you meet all the people and all the good people. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, I always tell this to everyone, but CCI is the most fun I've had in the four years that I've been at UAL. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh it's the best. <laughs> Oh, this is amazing. And, and uh, you took my word, fun. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, diverse, I, I think diversity or in any shape or form of this word, actually, uh, of, uh, and especially of talent. Mm. Do you want to go next, Joel? I did it with my rubber duck. Oh, okay, that, that made the work. I, I, I did, I, <laughs> the rubber duck is the answer. Um, if anyone uh, wants to find out about the rubber duck, then you just have to apply. So, mm. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I they don't know what it means, though. They don't know what it means. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't say that then. We're still good. Amazing. Yeah, we seriously, would love to have you as part of this community. Uh, and uh, well, you will find out about the rubber duck <laughs> if you join us <laughs> must, must eventually. <laughs> Uh, Amazing. Really wow. Thanks, everyone, for your contribution. It was great to spend this whole hour online with all of you. And yeah, before I say goodbye, I just wanted to quickly say that, yeah, our email is open to whatever question you have. So if there is anything that wasn't covered, apologies. We made our best to just fit everything into this like full hour. 
but please feel free to reach out to us if you have any um, question that was that wasn't covered please uh we will put our email on the chat and we will look forward to receiving any questions. Also, um, we'll be sending as well some relevant links after the session, and hopefully we can be in touch in a few months time with the date for the graduate showcase of the current cohort at the diploma. We're gonna run an online event. Um, hopefully it's gonna be as fun or even more fun than last year, which will be great. So we'll definitely be sharing all that information with us. That said, uh, as well, if you wanna follow us on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, we are on UAL underscore CCI. Um, so yeah, there we post everything about um, events, future opportunities, workshops. And on that note, before we leave as well, I wanted to share an amazing opportunity that we've just launched at CCI, which is a learning program that was designed by Dr. Pixcraft, who just joined the CCI to become the course leader of the new course in MA in Internet Equality. So we have launched Technology and Power, Rights, Resistance and Reimaginings, and it's gonna be a learning program open to literally anyone who's interested in activism and technology and we're going to have the public seminar next week on the 6th and 7th of may from 1 pm to 3 pm both days and then we will also have a four-day workshop running in the evenings that will tackle all about uh, technology and activism again and this is a very unique experience because we are opening up the opportunity to literally everyone around the world. So we'll have a very beautiful mix of UAL students, people from across the world, um, having very different practices, doing research, doing a lot of different things, but all united in, in with the goal of really seeing how we can take agency in technology. So it will be a really fun, a really fun experience. I had some like, I think I had the information over here. Yeah, I'm just gonna slide to the right. So yeah, you can find all this information on our social media channels. And I'm also gonna share the links on the email that I will send you all after the session. And I think that's all from me. So yeah, thanks a lot for attending this session. I hope you found this useful and insightful and informative. Please contact us if you have any further questions and we will look forward to receiving your application. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Vali. Thanks, Rocio. And thanks everyone that attended today. Thank you. Thanks, Georgina. Georgina. No worries. Bye. Live long and prosper, everyone. Same. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.